Hi parents, we are getting ready to start the second section of our unit on hurricanes. Um, on Monday, we will be retaking our quiz and then we will be doing an introduction into uh, the second section. They will come home with a paper that has this vocabulary and this information on it so that over the next week, week and a half, when the students come home, um, you guys can talk about these things together. All right. So, um, like I said, we're beginning our second unit on of her on hurricanes, and this section focuses on using pictures with captions, graphs, maps, and new vocabulary words to help us understand the text. Students should understand that these things are there to help them. They're, um, they're supports for what they read. Sometimes students don't quite understand or comprehend the text itself. Just reading the words doesn't always make a lot of sense to them. Um, sometimes their reading level is a little below um, where it should be. And so instead of just reading texts that are a little too difficult, we have other ways to help us interpret what we're reading. Um, so it allows them to see with their eyes what the words are talking about. Um, this short presentation is just an overview of our next four lessons. Um, in a perfect world, the next four lessons would just take four days. However, um, the material is quite extensive. Um, the amount of time they give us to cover each one of the activities is really short. So if I rush through every single activity in the amount of time, three minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, that um, the state is asking me to, what we're doing really won't make as much sense. So if I go a little slower over some of these activities and give them a little more support, then what we're doing will have more meaning, okay? Um, I'm going to give an overview of each specific lesson after we've learned it in class. Um, so that way you can just reinforce what we've learned in class at, at home. Um, you don't have to go through anything first and you don't even have to do any of this if uh, you don't have time or if it's just not something that you um, are interested in doing. But this offers you the opportunity to really look at what we're doing in class. So me, our text, this is our text for at least the next four lessons. Um, it is a really cool book. It is um, glossy pages. It has um, truth or um, true or false questions in it. It has um, statistics and resources and websites and lots of pictures and a couple of interviews. Um, it is really good. Um, you are not required to purchase this book, right? Uh, I don't know that we are going to read the entire, I don't think we read the entire book in class, um, but we are reading a large portion of it. So if the student were to ha have the opportunity to finish reading this book, they could take an AR test on it, get AR points, and meet their AR goal. Um, I found this book by Peter Benoit. Um, on Amazon, new and used. For, I think, some of the used copies were like 2 or $3, um, but definitely under $7 for this book. So it's a, it's a really cool add to your at-home library. But again, it is not a requirement. Um, I only have 30 copies of this book, so I don't have enough to send it home, or I, they, I would let them take it home. I have uh, four classes that use the book in class. All right. So here, this is our first, this is like one of the first pages in our book. And this is really um, probably the most complicated graphic um, that we're gonna be learning how to use. Um, it has a lot of information on it. The, the, the picture itself is definitely straightforward. It's obviously um, a satellite image of a storm and a map and um, a line that tracks the hurricane path. But for students who aren't used to reading pictures or reading captions or understanding maps, 
going through each section of this picture can take us some time, right? So the overall picture, like I said, is a satellite image. Um, it also includes a caption in the upper left-hand corner that talks about that red dotted line. On the right side of the picture, it's where the hurricane came into the United States through Miami. It went back over the Gulf, very wide and very deep into the Gulf. And our, our students already know and they can tell you that hurricanes gain speed and velocity over the Gulf, over warm waters. So when it came back over and hit in the United States, um, in the eastern corner of Louisiana, in Miss the, the southern portion of Mississippi, and in the southern portion of Alabama, it hit hard. Um, so that tells you the path that this hurricane took. It shows you how large the hurricane is. It, it, it extends the entire peninsula and then some of uh, the, the state of Florida. At the bottom, it explains what this picture is. And then in the top right hand corner, it gives you um, a map of what you're looking at with the states outlined. Um, like I said, it's a lot of information for them to digest. So just going over this picture and understanding this picture and talking about it and having the students discuss it would take at least five minutes, five minutes, if not 10 minutes to really let them understand what they're looking at, right? So that when they look at maps like or, or pictures like this again, then they have um, more of an understanding on how to read it. What are they looking at? What do they need to look for? What are these called, right? That this is a caption, that this is a map, that this is a satellite image. What is a satellite image? How do we get satellite images, right? So there's a lot of information that goes into um, understanding and decoding and connecting pictures and key details to the text. Um, this is a simple photo uh, with a caption. This is one from the book. It shows the heavy rains and flooding in Florida. Um, we'll talk about these pictures in depth. Look at the water move. That is incredibly fast. Um, like people could drown in that, right? Um, so we will, they'll learn about the path that the hurricane took and how it didn't just affect New Orleans. New Orleans was the most popular um, part of this disaster, but it sat for seven hours in Florida, sat over them and rained on them, right? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of information that the students are taking in about how hurricanes can be different because we just learned about Hurricane Andrew. So we've got a Venn diagram coming up on what are the similarities and what are the differences between these two major storms, right? They both were major hurricanes, but they did different types of damage. All right, we also have graphs like this. Now the students have looked at this, um, a variation of this graph. This is the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale. Um, the one that they have in their other book, Surviving Hurricanes, that I've shown in previous videos is much more detailed. It gives you, it doesn't just say the expected damage, it tells you like specific types of damage, right? So the students need to understand that um, as the category number gets larger, that the wind speed increases. So that means they under, need to know the word category. They need to understand what increase means and what damage means, right? And then these are some words that they use, extensive, de devastating, and catastrophic. So they are giving us some really, some pretty hefty vocabulary, but that's good because even if the students don't remember all of the vocabulary this time, they're being exposed to it and they're going to be exposed to it multiple times and then they'll be exposed to it again next year and they will be exposed to it in science and they will be exposed to it in history. So a lot of this vocabulary that they're getting now, um, the more times they're exposed to it, they'll be like, I heard that word before. And that's the goal. We are going to be rounding up these four lessons with a uh, part of a documentary. My kids love videos. They love to watch them. It, they're, they're interesting. Um, it's an excerpt from the documentary Hurricane on the Bayou. So it just, again, 
gives them um, another way to take in the information about the hurricane and how it impacted the people and the city of New Orleans. Right here we have text-specific vocabulary for this book, Hurricane Katrina, a true book. You can pause this video and um, take this information down just in case your student doesn't come home with the page that they're supposed to be bringing home on Monday the 16th, okay? So they need to know what satellite images are, what the National Hurricane Center is, what an engineer is, what a meteorologist is, what the ocean current is, what it means to evacuate, what they're talking about when they say that the hurricane made landfall, what a levee is, what a storm surge is, what it means to that the levees were breached, so what are breaches, they need to know what flood walls are, and who FEMA is. Um, this is the information. Uh, we're, we're not going to have specific quizzes on vocabulary, but we will be talking about these things. We will be um, saying, I will say it out loud. There will be times where I say it, they repeat me, and then they tell their shoulder partner what it is, like what is a, what is an engineer? And I'll say an engineer, they say an engineer is. A person who do designs, builds, or maintains engines, machines, or public works. And they will, then they'll like talk about it. And they like to talk to each other. Um, couple that with taking it in from one place, hearing it in another, using hand signals and, and motions, and then even having fun uh, opens up more areas of the brain to store this information. So I do try and incorporate fun into our lessons. Um, the Tuesday lesson, uh, section two, lesson one, um, we are actually going to be um, creating a, a very short script of like three questions um, and they will be competing to be the people who get to report on Hurricane Katrina going back in time, the winner will get um, beads from um, the city of New Orleans. So if you have any questions, and I love parental involvement, please email me, please contact me. I love having um, interactions with you guys, and I like to be able to support my students as much as possible. Um, I understand that some of the students are a little behind, so the more that we can give them, um, the, the better they're going to do. And I really want us to have a successful year. And I think we're a great team. So I hope you have a nice Sunday or whatever day it is that you're watching this. And I will see your kids in school on Monday.